all my life I worked in fashion industry and at some point I was a main fashion designer in the department that was responsible for tailoring upon the individual order. And at our times we had a terrible scarcity of fashionable clothes, but people wanted to wear something stylish and therefore they were trying to order something individual and interesting. This is why there was a big demand on my profession. Annually we used to do seasonal collections for a wide audience, and here we were more open to innovative ideas, as obviously these were all shows, catwalks and daffodils, and it required a very creative approach. But despite the fact that we had all the magazines and materials were quite available, we were still able to feel the particularities of the local style in collection, the particularities of the Baltic style and their preferences. But notwithstanding the fact that we're all aware that upcoming seasons usually bring all the new tendencies like Asian motifs, Brazilian style, Mexican and Chinese and actually Orientalism was always in the top ten. At the same time we had to sell on collections and people weren't that much open to experimentalism. I still think that the myth of individuality was created back in my times and was aimed to make people buy mass-produced products. Now Pret-a-Porter production is of a big range and availability on the market and people can combine all the articles. Actually it is not an option, but it is a prevailing aim of fashion's conglomerate. Speaking of young customers, then, there is just an interesting and contemporary approach to appearances and negotiation with two with customers from two ethnic groups isn't any different. However, the older generation, then yes, there are differences that are considered. This is another generation, another times it was brought up, another taste it adhered to. And I would say obvious linguistic and ideological differences. And I, for example, definitely know that Russian clientele prefers everything bright, extravagant, interesting. Then Latvian public would like very restrained clothing and in terms of color and model. And they are very afraid of too much details. And we had a mixed society where official language is one and above all we are in Europe and therefore people want to be Europeans and it is a common tendency because in the old generation they were brought up in different families Russians in Russian, Latvians in Latvian there was, there was different cultural environment even a different interior design, clothes, language, different approaches well gradually it was all blurring when we had to work together and staff was integrating but now there is almost no difference it, it is almost impossible to distinguish Latvians and Russians on the street yes, maybe facial and body features Russian cheekbones and Latvian stature but, on the whole, it has become almost impossible. An individuality in fashion is tradable as watch Redor, a good holiday in VIP resort, a, ho a house in a posh area and clothes from a particular brand. In certain society circles, clothes made by an individual order from a quality fabric still stands for a particular position and therefore is appreciated. In the case people want to approach to that level, then yes, in magazines they do not voice their goods on you but make it quite clear. If you want to live like that, you need to wear this and that and that, and it works 100%. Sylvia was just a treasure. I don't know whether it was due to the fact that they examine a topic of postmodernity on the course of drama or just because of her analytical mind. Nevertheless, she was an amazing respondent. She brought up some crucial questions that have been springing out throughout my research. I asked her about her earring 
and she told me about the sophisticated originality of crafted and handmade accessories. She told me about the existence of individual style and reminded how inescapable is the system. Made by your own, something original, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But really, there is nothing like original, as I said before. Mm -hmm. I made this one. Yeah. But it's similar to the song which you can buy at the shop as well. Yeah? Yeah. The only thing which makes it original is the thing that I made it. Uh, you have plenty of kinds of styles, for example, like the artistic style, like the ethno style, like the hippie style, whatever, but there are copies of pictures, images, yeah. which are really somewhere, you know, where you know, in your mind. Really. That's true. And for example, I'm um, Eastern European, right? I was thinking, for example, my color of hair is blonde. Yeah. I chose it because I want to highlight some style. I love the fact that knowledge of the subject makes it easier to develop an argument. At the same time, knowledge may not be indigenous and can serve as a reflection onto all the literature that has been gone through, filtered and eventually adopted. At the same time, I could not not show some of the bits of our conversation. Is it first your act of choice, what you're going to buy for other people to see you as this character, this, yeah. you know, this identity, or it's opposite? What is first? For example, um, some people are just showing you a picture of something and you want to follow it and then it builds your identity. If the clothes, for example, just think about it. What is first? Your identity? As an independent woman, or you're getting this identity through the clothes, or you're getting you know this identity from, 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 from your family to start with, or being a child, you know. Maybe you're just family, you know. Maybe just because you've been told that you're female. female. Because if, you, if, there, if there wouldn't be a system. That's a basic, that's a basic thing, that you're female. Or you're but yeah, you, you could have not known it, you know. How could I not know that? Because you've been told, because society told you you're female, you have to act like this. Another curious fact is that all of my interviewees mentioned that they are females. However, all of them had a very different approach to it and different attitude towards it. If Sylvia, for example, was highly aware of having female's identity, then Liz was trying to resist it by means of her look. Well, to start with, I started wearing baggy jeans, like really baggy jeans, and because I didn't like blokes like looking at me basically and I was just like well I know and then it just sort of developed into what I wear now. I suppose just sort of hanging around with my sister helps as well because she's rich she's like you think I dress crazy like she dresses she's got like loads of dreads loads of things in her hair loads of like she's just great she goes to free parties all the time. Now I'm more female mm -hmm. uh, before I wear more trousers jeans mm -hmm. more sportive clothes I say and now I think I, I find my, my style. But that uh, does not mean that I forget the other styles. Yeah, 